So now I'm here with Sophie and Robbie, and they're going to tell me a little bit about a uh, project from Blue Origin called the Orbital Reef. Tell me, Robbie, what is Orbital Reef? Orbital Reef is what we hope to be the very beginning of a permanent human presence in space. It's going to be the world's first commercial space station. Wow. Okay. And uh, when do you guys propose to have this uh, launch in space? We would definitely like to have it up there uh, before ISS, end of ISS. So if okay. there's a clean transition, we don't want to have a, a repeat of what happened with the space shuttle and commercial crew where there was a decade-long gap. Yeah, because I think I heard that the license for the uh, space station hasn't been renewed. It actually did. Last oh, it did. By the administration. Oh, really? I wasn't aware of that. Okay. And that's so interesting because there's what eight main countries that uh so that you know, work on that or something like that. So to get everyone's approval, I can only imagine what a uh, you know. I think that reef, the ISS is a pretty good analogy of what we need instead of countries doing a space station. It's companies. It's core. It's a lion's partnership between the Sierra Space and the world. Equal partners We're providing elements. Okay, so what does Sierra do and what does Blue Origin do for this project? So Sierra Space provides the Dream Chaser vehicle. That's what's going to transport That's, that's what's behind us, right? Yep, so that's going to transport your astronauts or your crew to the station as well as cargo. Okay. We also provide an inflatable habitat called the light. So that's where the astronauts are going to be living and working when they're in space. And then we provide a final element called the nose, which is a cylindrical volume. That's where the astronauts are actually going to enter the station. Vehicles can dock to it and it's used for storage, experiment purposes. So we're providing a lot of different versatile elements to the station. Okay, so can we see any of these components you're talking about on the screen or the, uh, the image here? Yeah, so if you're looking, looking at the screen, you can see the inflatable life and then the node off to the side. That uh, post over there is going to give you a better graphic. Let's take a look. Yeah. So that's showing you the Dream Chaser here, that inflatable again, and then the node. Um, and then these graphics are actually the interior, interior of the node right here. So you can see one possible way that it could be outfitted. Okay. Zero gravity, of course. That looks very fun. Yep, you can float around. Use you guys uh, taking applications right now? Because I'd like to be one of the people <laughs> that goes on here. Talk for marketing people. Yeah? <laughs> Tell me about this uh, space station. It looks modular. It looks to me like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten main components, is it? Yes, yeah, so the dream is to basically build space stations and build cities on Earth. Okay. So the blue elements are what we call the core. The core is two parts the core itself, and then this what we call the energy mass, which contains our solar panels, our batteries, our docking ports. And so the cores contain the core infrastructure, like, like a city. Sewage, power, uh, other util trash management, other utilities. And then we attach partner modules like light and also like the Boeing phone train or laboratory module that use the resources in the core to uh, do their job. And so we really wanted, our space architects really wanted it to be the experience of a street in space. So, you know, a street, you know, it's, it's a commons, there's buildings on either side. It's a neighborhood, and then there's a sky above you. And so our sky orbital reef are these big windows that look up to Earth. Okay. How many people will this be able to hold? So each core, each light can seat up to ten, and each core is designed to handle metabolic loads and logistics needs of ten. And then so we ideally would like to be able to link at least three cores together. Yeah. The other elements, there's a few other elements that are not in this picture. There is uh, the single person spacecraft, Genesis Engineering. That's basically the pod in 2001 A Space Odyssey. It's a better way to do space walk. Yeah. Less dangerous, less time consuming. We really hope it's a good way. It's like, you know, space walks and ISS are tech diving. The single person spacecraft is scuba. There's a robot arm. Not in this picture, which is how uh, various models link together. Yeah. There's a space tug that Blue Origin is working on that's going to actually fly the model up to the station. Uh, back here is Starliner, which is Boeing's uh, capsule. It's launching later this year, but it'll also be a crew transport. Uh -huh. And then all of this gets lifted by our new fighter rockets. That's a big digital launch vehicle, seven meter fairing, it's all about all these big modules. And that's being built at our factory in Florida right now. Okay, so this whole project is being uh, 
It's actually funded by Bezos, right? No, you know? actually not. That's the beauty of the Puerto Rico model. It's inspired by how large-scale construction projects and arenas and housing complexes and are done. Yeah. It's a pooling of resources. So Blue Origin is building new land in the core and all that stuff with, with Jeff's money. But then Sierra Space raised $1.5 billion in the largest single DC round outside of SpaceX for an aerospace company because of the energy of this project. It allows for investment from all around the world to build. This is how we think, we think this is the only financial way to actually go and like build large space infrastructure, is this pooling of resources. Okay, very neat. So the, uh, the pod that's over there, uh, how does that, um, you know, fit in with the stuff we're looking at, or is that completely different, or on the screen? Yeah. Well, no, just the uh, the the, di the display that's over here, the diorama. Yeah. So this this is the life model. This is, yeah. This is. I don't want to put words in Sierra Space's mouth. Okay. That's that's all them though. So. That's them, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. And I think you know the which thing about it is that that is a life and dream chaser are independent products. Yeah. From the uh, reef. Right. They're they're part of they're part of reef. But if Sierra wanted to go develop life to go to the moon or Mars, great. Like Blue is very happy to get to be part of like them bringing this product to market. Gotcha. Okay. So what is it you do for the company again, Robbie? So I am the integration lead for the core modules life support system. Yeah. So that is infrastructure uh, for breathing, for water treatment, food, toilet, uh, gas storage, emergencies, and whatnot. Okay. What's your favorite uh, sci-fi space movie? Can I name a TV show? Yeah. For All Mankind. Best space TV, best space show on TV right now. Never heard of that one. It's, it's happening now, yeah. huh? Yeah. Okay. Because I know you mentioned 2001 Space Odyssey earlier. I don't hear many people talk about that movie, but it's one of my favorites. Oh, it's a great, it, it is one of the best movie experiences of my life. The University of Michigan did a 70 millimeter screening with a live orchestra and choir. And it's like, oh my god, I get this movie now. It oh, yeah. needs to be seen at scale, don't watch public. Like I, I wish I was able to see that movie in, was it 1968? Oh yeah. I wish I was able to see it then, I was, you know, 20 something years before I was born. But it would have been really cool to see that and then just kind of watch the space race happen and the space shuttle and the, the space stations and man, that would have been, been really cool, so. All right, well, thanks for your time. Thanks for uh, showing me all this stuff. Absolutely.